Hi guys, hi guys, how you doing? Good evening. My name is Crystal. If you like my videos, please press the like button, please do subscribe. Alexa, what's the time please? That's on low for you, let me put it up. Alexa, what's the time, please? It's 6.20 p.m. Okay, guys, it's 6.20 p.m. Um, I've been back from my mum's for about one and a half hours now. I've just been taking it easy in my flat because I came over all really, really hot, um, like really sweating and thinking I was going to faint. So I've got three fans on at the moment and I'm going to put another one on. It's very, very hot in this flat. I'm just going to check the temperature. It's 25 degrees inside this flat. 25 degrees. Right. So um, we had problems with the taxi this morning. So my mum ordered a taxi. I don't know what taxi it was, it was a white taxi with a male Asian driver with glasses, quite podgy and he had a really British accent, nice chap, he got lost so my mum rang the taxi and I waited and I waited, I looked out off of my balcony and I saw a taxi coming down Corey's Road and it went past. And I thought it's too hot to go chasing after taxis. You know, running, chasing after taxis in this heat is not good. So I, th I, I, I thought, right, let's wait and see if the taxi comes back outside my block of flats. And it didn't. So it went round the block again and I thought, I've had enough of this. So I rang my mum up. I rang my mum, Jennifer, up, and I told her what was going on. I said the taxi's gone right down the bottom. So she said, oh, wait a minute, I'll give them a call. So I thought, right, I'm going to go downstairs. I threw some rubbish out in the bin. And then I noticed that the taxi had turned around and parked outside where he usually parks upstairs. So the taxi was parked where the guy upstairs, Ford Mondeo, was parked last night in exactly the same place and I got into the taxi and he said oh you you live there I went no I don't live out I don't live in there no I said I live up there I said I haven't had this problem in quite a while I said usually the taxi drivers know exactly where it is right I haven't had that problem for some time so he said, oh, okay, we've sorted it out now, though. He said, my son lives over there. I said, oh, that's nice. And then this taxi driver said, can you put your seatbelt on, please? I was sat in the back, and he told me to put my seatbelt on, which is good. Um, so I put my seatbelt on, and we drove all the way up to Dole Gardens, right up to the top. And it was £10 exactly, the taxi fare, from Corey's Road to Donald Gardens. It was exactly £10. I had £10 in my handbag, so I handed the driver £10. And then when I went up to the doorstep and my mum said, hang on a minute. And my mum went out to talk to the taxi driver. My mum did. Because she'd actually ordered another taxi. She'd ordered another one thinking that this one that was like ages late wasn't turning up. And she said to the taxi rank, if another taxi turns up, I'll pay for it. So there's a bit of a a mix up this morning over the taxis. I went into my mum's flat, I sat down and I started to come over all ill and I didn't, I didn't want to talk, I had a massive headache and I felt sick 
I thought it was going to throw up because it's really, really, really hot, right? And it has been for some time now, even though the sun had gone in, there wasn't much sun, it was still really muggy. So I was just sat down on the chair, not really interacting with my mother that much because in the taxi I'd come over all sick, I, I thought I was going to be ill. So I just sat there quietly, I put the telly on and then I got Dad's old Amazon Fire Stick and I put YouTube on. I started to put, I, I learnt that Sarah Ferguson um, had had an operation and that she had breast cancer. Right, she'd had a mastectomy. And my mum says, I don't want to hear anything about the royals, can you switch it off please? It's my mum my mum's flat, I respected my mother's wishes and I turned anything to do with the royal family off. I then put, I like crime, I like true life crime and I was looking through different uh, videos, there was this um, channel that had retro games from the 80s, the old crisp packets, the old sweet packets. And all that kind of thing, because I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, you see, as a child and a teenager. So I was watching all the, the adverts and things of years ago. Then I watched Baldy Food Guy, the Baldy Food Guy, and what his videos, because I like him as well, the Baldy Food Guy. I was watching him driving to Aldi uh, and... Uh, Iceland I think but my mum began to talk so much that I couldn't focus on what I was watching so my mum started talking really really loudly so I just like okay let my mum speak I didn't get cross I let my mum go on and on and on and I, I didn't get cross I just kept quiet and let my mother speak um, Later on, my mum said to me, would you like a takeaway? A takeaway. So she brought over some leaflets and she'd had a new one. The famous fried chicken, which is in Chatham, it's in Luton Road. The famous fried chicken. So my mum rang this number. I thought a nice slushy in this cold weather because a slushy was advertised, you know what slushies are, ice cold, crunched up ice. I thought, wow, I, I feel ill, and a ni I fancy a nice slushy, a slushy. And my mum was, was holding the phone, and she was about 20 minutes on and off, ringing this famous fried chicken number. And uh, she couldn't get through. She couldn't get through on, on this number. And then finally she got through um, and, and <laughs> the person on the end of the phone said to my mum, we haven't got any drivers. We haven't got any drivers. Now my mum put this leaflet in my face. I read it. I thought, yeah, slushy and they didn't have any drivers. The, the famous fried chicken shop in Luton Road, Chatham. And this has happened twice now and I'm sick of it. Why put leaflets through people's doors, A, if the number doesn't work, and B, if you haven't got any drivers? So, I resorted to Super Pizza. Super pizza, and I had a chicken burger with my, what my mum said with all the trimmings but no cheese. That's what she said to the guy over the phone. Super pizza, these are the chocolate chip cookies. There's three left, I've only had one because I felt very ill. I didn't say anything to my mum, but she must have wondered why I was so quiet. I thought I was going to be sick. My mum kindly put my washing in her washing machine because mine is still broken and I hung my washing outside of my mother's 
small bit of garden. She's got a piece of garden. I haven't. I've got a balcony. I haven't got a garden. On and out off, my mum was giving me things, food to eat. I've got some butter kiss, crunchy popcorn, a couple of bags of what's it, some apple and black currant juice from Morrison's. Um, but all the while, I just wasn't feeling very well. I just really, I wanted to go home and lie down, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> My mum's given me some food. I've had a takeaway from Super Pizza. I'm, I'm full up. Um, and um, yeah, I was focusing on desserts and ice cold drinks mainly because you don't want to eat heavy food in this weather, do you? So I was trying to focus on getting ice cold desserts and drinks and a slushy sounded nice and I, I'm afraid I couldn't have one so I've got diet coke instead um, these are chocolate donuts cold <laughs> and I've ended up with a bottle of Pepsi a bottle of diet Pepsi so instead of my slush I got a diet coke waiting for the takeaway to arrive with the usual guy, big chubby guy, nice and friendly. My mum had a phone call. She'd had a blood test. My mother had had a blood test. She had a bit of cotton wool and the, you know, the tape over the arm. She'd had a blood test, she said. I said, okay. So the doctors phoned my mother Jennifer up while I was sat in her living room and I listened to what was being said and they were discussing my mother's mental health medication, my mother's. She's on a lanzapine and they wanted to up my mother's mental health medication to 10 milligrams and she said she was happy with the 7 milligrams that she was on. So that's not my medication. My medication is depression tablets, citalopram for severe depression. And I started to get depressed when I came home from my mother's again. Because my mum is a very dominant person and I, I, and I wasn't very well. As I said to my doctor over the phone, my mother likes to take control over everything and I don't feel in control. So my, I'm going to get my prescription another day because they've put my depression tablets up to 30 milligrams. Right? My mother doesn't suffer from depression. I do. So the phone went, the phone kept going off in the morning, the dips of taxi companies ringing, in the afternoon it was the doctors, we even had alarms going off inside my mother's flat which was causing my headache to get worse. Also there was a chap in a grey cap going up my mother's garden, he was a gardener, they were cutting the grass so you had all the noise, uh, all that all afternoon of, of the um, like streamers and that cutting the grass outside my mum's and a man was going up and down in my mum's garden area in a grey cap. Um, like I said I wasn't very well and the phone went up, must have gone off about four times and I just sat there quiet just wishing my headache to go away, to be honest. Um, the doctors rang back and asked my mum, I don't know why, but they rang back and said, do you drive to my mother? And then they asked her if she uses the bus. 
as I was watching a Levi Belfield documentary, they asked my mother over the phone if she uses the bus. And I started laughing because, I mean, I mean, really, why was the doctor ringing my mum up to ask if she could drive or she uses the bus? It was ridiculous. <laughs> then that set my mum off, actually. That set my mum off. She, that, she said that her neighbour's got the same doctor that she has. And then she started all that business about people are trying to copy her, Jennifer. Copy my mother, who is a 77 grey-haired older woman. But everyone was trying to copy Jennifer. Not me, my mum's Jennifer, and she's 77 OAP. So I... With the, the takeaway came, I ate it, but I couldn't wait to get the F out of it. I couldn't wait to get out. She was even talking about uh, making me out to be me. I was a robot, some automaton. I need my chip and pin changed. I don't know what she was talking about. I ain't a robot, as far as I know. When I cut myself and fall over, I bleed. So she's very, very confusing. The way she speaks can fuck your head up. And she's very loud. So the taxi, uh, the taxi came just after or before 4.30. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't wait to get out of there. Red taxi with white bits and an Austrian Austrian driver with glasses, a very skinny Austrian guy with glasses. And remember that Charlie I meet on the field occasionally is thin as a rake, bent over with a pair of glasses. And this Austrian driver had a hat like Charlie's on his dashboard. He had a hat like Charlie's on his dashboard. Right. Also, it's the same taxi and he hasn't bothered to, to mend the wing mirror. The wing mirror was broken. The same one on the left hand side. I don't know when I did a video about this foreign guy driving me home before. But the, the, the wing mirror hadn't been mended. It was still broken. He couldn't look out of it. And the car was juddery juddering and my mum said to the driver I hope both of you get get to, to where you're going safely and the car was juddering and it had a broken wing mirror so the guy drops me off at the back of the flats it's 11 pounds this time 11 I give him a 10 pound note and some spare change and he opens the boot and I take my own bags out come into the flat and um, go up the stairs. My mum's not given me too much today. One box of cat food, one box of dog food. But I, I, I went up the stairs myself feeling sick as a pig and, and not very well. And when I was coming home in the taxi, it's amazing how many people have dyed their hair ginger. There's one going up and down Corby's Road on a skateboard with ginger long hair. And remember that Jennifer said that everyone was copying her and she's a 77 year old lady. So I came home in the taxi, I saw about six or seven people with bright ginger hair. Bright ginger. Men and women. got into my flat. I was happy to see my chihuahua. I missed him very much. Um, he was he was happy to see me. He was snuggled up. It is very hot in here. Uh, it's almost like a sauna with fans on. Um, it's not going to change if no one changes it. So that taxi is still dangerous with the broken wing mirror. These things are still going on. 
my mum is still giving these speeches which fuck my head up. She was talking to the Alexa like I do and this is how my mum was speaking. Alexa, what's the, what's the day today? The 27th of June 2023 was on a Tuesday. Alexa, what's the time? The time is 6.39pm. She actually said something to Alexa and Alexa said, would you like me to do a fart box? A fart box, whatever a fart box is. And my mum laughed and said, no Alexa, we won't be doing with that, that's rude. And she proceeded to copy me. Did I get cross? No, I thought it was funny. <laughs> if people want to copy, they can copy. And remember, there's a lot of actors and actresses with ginger hair. Ed Sheeran being one of them. Now all I'm going to do is get on with my day. I would have gone out to the local co-op, but I just, ha I, I, I just ha don't, I haven't felt like it. I'm not in the mood for it, to go into a shop and be treated like I'm a piece of shit. I'm not in the mood for it. I've got a stinking headache, I feel sick, and um, these things won't stop until someone stops them, right? And it is dangerous driving a car with a broken wheel mirror. It's very dangerous. And nobody seems to care. Like they don't. The first driver did. He went, put your seatbelt on, please. But this one, coming home. Um, he, he just started questioning, question, asking me questions in the taxi. And I thought, yeah, and then when I try to speak to you, you don't want to speak back. It's all, it was all right for him to speak to me, but when I asked him questions, he didn't want to know. So that's another form of trying to control someone, isn't it? I'll, I'll speak and you can shut up. Right, I'm, I'm fine. It's just one of those things, the heat is unbearable. And when you do want to lie down, you can't because the heat won't let you go to sleep. So you don't get sleep, you feel sick. And then, I mean, and sometimes I just think I'm going to sit in some cold water. Just sit in it. Especially late at night when you wake up and you can't get back to sleep. I just sit in some water, cold water. I mean, you want, when you want to have a shower, it's right, you want to use the hot water to make sure that you're clean when you're having a wash, but, but you suffer, don't you? Using the hot water. <laughs> right, guys, I hope everybody has a lovely evening. Um, yes, that Charlie is probably about. I'm not interested in him. I don't want to be tricked and conned. Uh, and I'm happy by myself. I, I don't want to go out with that Charlie. I, I don't, I, and I don't want people that this is exactly what, what went on with my dad, trying to make out my dad was a lovely man and he actually wasn't tricking you, conning you and making someone a pit, fit, look appealing when they're not. I'm not interested. I'd rather be on my own. See you later.